So I'm just saying like that, but like, no, I, can, I know I can do that after click on that, but then I gotta click on the weapon, and then it rolls the weapon dice. I did that in Gambit of the Sea, where I set up macros instead. That is and awesome. it did it for me. Use window pop out for characters. Use advanced keyboard choice. And it makes it a lot easier when you're rolling it for a skill, rather than having to mouse over to see what the original roll was. To see yeah. what your natural roll was, you can just look on the screen and see what your natural roll was. Yeah. That um, is awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And also, while, uh, while I'm thinking about it, you brought up a good point. Um, before we really start this game and get into this, how are we doing this again? When you roll a natural 20, is it double the weapon die? Are we doing just double the damage? How are it's, we doing the... It's double the weapon die. Is, is what yeah, it does. You, it's, it's the die is, the die is rolled twice, and, and that's what roll 20 automatically does for you right now. So if you crit yeah. on an attack and then roll for damage, it'll roll the damage die twice. We just use the, the roll 20 thing, but when I play at home, I just double the damage to make the math easier. So you just roll the damage dice once and double it? Yep, that's basically what I do at home. I've always I've always rolled roll to double the dice. Cuz right, I think so like, I'm I don't know I don't know what, if either one gives average higher numbers than the other. But I don't know. So I just like I'm rolling just with the dice. I've been going in I or I was going in manually entering it. So like for example, um like with my great sword it does 2d6. So does the crit, is the crit supposed to say 2d6, or does the crit supposed to say 4d6? Well, no, when it, when it does the math, uh, it adds the 2d6. It, it does that calculation. Okay, I was just making sure, because I just did not know. No, no, I know, I know that it's automatic, it's gonna roll. I'm just saying, like, if you're looking at the character sheet, and I'm in the, uh, the gear on Greatsword, where it says crit damage... Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to roll additional dice. Is it supposed to roll 2d6? Or or on the crit, does it say it's supposed to roll 4d6? Because I don't want to put 4d6 and it rolls basically 6d6 at that point. Uh, uh... So like if you were to go onto my character sheet and click on Greatsword and click the gear icon... And you look where it says damage. Uh, does it say what it's supposed to roll? For what? For greatsword? Yeah, because I'm just worried that my uh, crit damage isn't correct and that when I'm rolling it, it's only rolling 2d6 instead of. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Bless you. Um, no, when it, when it does. Uh, the damage, let me, god, we did so many thousands of dice, dice rolls. Uh, I'm gonna try to find your natural 20 again. When you, so I just clicked on it, so. And see, it rolled, it rolled the dice twice. Yeah, it rolled all the dice twice. Okay, yeah. alright, yeah. cool. Alright. No, because he's he has an extra extra I, cold. I, it's an extra D six of cold, I believe. Well, I thought he only D four cold. Uh, oh no, this is the witch Grace bolt door. one. Yeah, that was just the witch bolt one. Ah, uh, so it rolled the damage witch bolt. Do it, card. Now here's oh, the next no. thing, and it. And, uh, and Amaya, I can't really hear you. You're like speaking over Stefan's mic. Uh, but one thing I did realize is I don't think that's the correct amount because it's like I'm not trying to like hurt me here, but it should be the weapon die goes up once. It shouldn't be. Uh, uh, so so instead of it being two d six and with a crit, it shouldn't be 4d6. It should be 3d6. Because mm. the crit would add an extra weapon dice, right? It shouldn't do... No, it would add... No. All dice or that... double. What you're thinking of is... Uh, is in, in a lot of D&D &D games, there's a game... Or there's a... 
there's an enchantment on on weapons you can get called you, it's usually called massive critical which when you hear it you get on top of the already doubling the damage or doubling how many dice you roll you get to roll x amount extra die so if you have massive crit 2d6 you get to double your d dice and then roll an additional 2d6 for critic okay that's what you're All right, so now that we've made our game just all that much better. <laughs> yeah, it'll make it better for the viewers for sure. Oh, yeah, because we're actually rolling dice now. <laughs> Speaking of, we've been live for the last five minutes. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> you welcome. Hi, Twitch. <laughs> oh, God. Surprise! <laughs> I went live I went as soon as we enabled the 3D dice. Oh, jeez, so they saw those... <laughs> I love it. Okay. Anyways, D and D Beyond. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about getting that worked out for next session. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Our sponsor, D and D Beyond. I wish. Dude. I wish. We can get, we can get a sponsor. Them and roll twenty. To be honest, uh, if we contact them and get sponsored, then we can get the D and D Beyond stuff for free. It'd be dope. <laughs> They sponsor, right. sponsor like, more, like, small, more like games like, than you think. We just need to average yeah, like eight viewers before they'll sponsor us. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Alrighty. Well then, uh, let's. Uh, Without let's further started. ado. Cue intro. Well, you said, I mean, Q intro. Disney I know, and I love how everybody got silent, like, everyone got silent, and I'm like, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, I don't have an intro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's Anthony, it's not his job. Alright. That'd be, that'd be kick-ass, though, if we had, like a, like, a really cool, like, video intro or something. Oh, God. Too much work. Too I don't have work. 500 Five. bucks to Five. pay an animator, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh no, not 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 even just animation, just like like think of it like podcast or like just like some type of audio clip for the beginning. Like like welcome to Eridus where we call our DM Daddy. That's never gonna die, I hope you know. No, no. I, mean, I want it I'm, I want it to be buried six feet underground. <laughs> not gonna happen. I get, it. No. <laughs> I, I get it, buddy. I get it. It's just one of those things. It's one of those things that stick with us forever, you know? <laughs> and it, it should you know, it's just something <laughs> that we want to go away, but it just won't. Just, just I understand with, uh, how you feel. Just like, just like with America and naughty, naughty words, words, it's not going away anytime soon. <laughs> so, so you understand how I feel, right, Anthony? <laughs> just sometimes we don't like it when people keep bringing up the past. Uh, I, I just took seven points of psychic damage physically. <laughs> <laughs> how do you take uh, physical psychic damage? Uh, I have a migraine now. Oh, got, oh, got it. it. <laughs> hey, that actually makes sense. All right. Is there a way? There? Oh yeah, you oh. can just click on the dice and it gets rid of them. Cool. All so right. Click on the screen. Yeah. So, the last time we left our heroes, they were on the chase after having been detained by the uh, city guard after an attack on the king. Uh, a few things happened. Interrogations were made. Uh, blind and deaf clerics were suddenly made... <laughs> able to see again. I forgot about that. Uh, oh, oh, oh. After praising the Raven Queen for her efforts in healing him. <laughs> after leaving said interrogations and the miracles of the gods uh the party walked around uh went to a couple of places uh asked questions started their own investigation 
Uh, in doing so, Zarus met his contact in the city, uh, who was keeping an eye out uh, for any information that they might have. Uh, Gundor proceeded to lose 100 gold to a man who may or may not be a, a sports better. And the party met someone hidden, not looking to make themselves noticed, but just keeping an eye out. Afterwards, the party bedded down in probably one of the sleaziest places in the city, uh, the Rusty Bedpost. Uh, after a night of rat-catching shenanigans and holes through walls and floors, uh, the party woke up with maybe a crick or two in their neck, but uh, were willing to go down into the sewers and track down these assailants where they found the maintenance room with a book, a map, and the incriminating knowledge that the book is encrypted or encoded in some gibberish that nobody can seem to make out. After the party looks around for an exit around that maintenance room, they come to the surface, finding that the day has now turned to night. And they were down there far longer than they thought they would be. And this is where we leave off. So today's no, the first. Uh, sorry. Late afternoon, not night. Sun has not gone down. It's setting. Uh. So is this still the first day after we were yes. interrogated? Okay. Yes. All right. So. <laughs> Still day one. Uh, all right, because the next day, tomorrow, is the legit actual brawler tournament at that bar. And then two more days is supposed to be the fake one, or the one that I lost my money at. Oh, or maybe it's just a fight. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway. So... Uh, so we popped up in the city, or we came out of the sewers. Where exactly are we? Um, so you guys are in an alleyway, uh, seemingly, um, you're not quite sure where, but, uh, the district seems run down, and, and it, you seem in the same district as the Rusty Tankard and the, the Rusty Bedpost. So we were down for a long time, just going in circles? Kind of. Uh, I mean, you guys didn't get out of, uh, bed until, like, 11. I'm jealous of my character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, anyway, so I'll, I'll walk out of the alley and just look, look around me, see if I see any noticeable buildings. You get my bearings. Um, as you... Uh, walk out of the alleyway and just kind of like peer around kind of trying to get your bearings again uh, you see uh, the rusty tankard um, about a block and a half down ah, is it just just the place we were looking for right I would prefer yeah, not to not. sleep here again so <laughs> It's definitely worth the walk to sleep somewhere else. Agreed. This proves our point, though, that um, they must have been through here, because that they, if this was their exit, if we followed their tracks correctly, they they must have gone through the rusty record, and hopefully my contact will know something soon. He's keeping he's keeping eyes and ears. Up. For any information regarding this group, and I paid right. him easily enough not to lie. Uh, one thing that uh, just wanted to clarify, because I overheard two people talking. Uh, the Rusty Tinker, 
that's the ball. That's the uh, that's the place where I can do the brawling and where Zarus, I believe, your friend is. But um, I think it was the rusty hangnail. That was the place we slept. Just wanted to clarify. Uh, I don't. I'm, my memory is a little fuzzy. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I, was just, I was letting you know. Uh, so what was that history roll for? <laughs> to remember the name of the place we slept. Well, uh, the... I mean, it, it was pretty easy. It was the rusty bedpost. Yeah, we, we would definitely remember the name of it because oh, it was yeah, such it was a such shitty experience. You definitely remember. <laughs> I remember. Where's my pin? Where's my pin? Well, whenever oh, we decide where we want to sleep, I, I believe that we uh, need to have a serious uh, discussion about how we want to pursue this. And she says that as uh, she feeds Luna another rat. That's completely fine, Shell, but I thought uh, we were on the agreement of going to uh, the... Uh... Open, open my journal again. The, uh, fucking, uh, Rusty Tanker. We were going back to the Rusty Tanker. Yeah, to find we are. contact. Well, my contact is already out. Um, you know, to get in contact with Well, still, maybe you can translate the letter we got. Yeah, don't remember the that's letter. A, I, that, that's a good point about that. He might, he might know this, uh, you know, code and how to decode it. So, I'll start walking towards the rusty beard. I'll right. join you. Alright, are the rest of you sleeping there again? Or? No, 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 we're, we're going to the bar. We're going to the bar. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, dude? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the rusty the tanker rusty. and the rusty bedpost are, are two separate buildings. So. Yeah, the rusty the... tankers the bar. Yeah, but they're across the street from one another. Possibly owned by the same businessman. <laughs> His name is him. Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Come down to Rusty's Inn, and when uh, you get tired and you want to go to sleep, you sleep there. And then when you want something to drink, you go over to the uh, the rusty tanker to get yourself some of my shitty beer. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. All right, so you guys walk over, and you guys smell of high heavens of the sewer, and people around you just kind of like are, are starting to catch this waft, and like they're giving you this wide berth around you. <laughs> it's almost like the splitting of the sea. <laughs> um. At the very least, I cast press the dissertation on myself a couple of times to clean myself off. Okay. Yeah, once once is enough. You you just it just sloughs off of you and, and you smell no longer. Shout hey, out at Zaris. Marvelous spell and I use it on myself. Can uh Shout walks and you, then uh, glares at Alivar. She she she's just like glaring between the two of them, like modding, like, looking like, back and back forth. forth. <laughs> Z's, like, still, like, the bottom half of him's, like, still, like, oh. soaking oh. wet. And he's got, like, like, dirty gunk and, like, moss and stuff, like, stuck to his fur on his underside. We, we can't oh. have Popo with that. Nope. I'll cast a yeah. visitation on Z. Alright, so Z's now clean. Shao okay, just like stares there. menacingly at Alvar. Okay, everybody gets present digitation. <laughs> See, that's, uh, all I was, that's all I was trying to get done, dude. I was just trying to be like, look, we all want to smell like wet dog. 
Stand in this bar with my spell book open, just casting a spell over every single party <laughs> member. I'll say that that you guys are are casting precedation precedentation back and forth, you know, to clean each other off as you're walking. Uh, <laughs> Nor learns how to cast the spell. <laughs> take that feat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can take the, there's the feat that lets you learn like two cantrips. So, or yeah. I can take the new uh, unearth arcana barbarian path that lets me, you know. Like oh. fucking like do magic OP style. <laughs> uh, muscle wizard question mark. <laughs> uh, basically Pretty it's much. like um, it's like the big muscly wizard from Fairly Odd Parents. You know oh, the God. one that's like uh, ah, to <laughs> get to the chopper. But like fairies get back to the fairy world. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right, so you guys enter the rusty tankard. Um, it's not as busy as you saw it before because you showed up a lot later towards drinking hour. Um, but there's still a fair number of patrons around. Um, do I spot that uh, the brawler guy who I originally talked to and gave 100 gold to? in the brawling area. Make a perception check. Man, my perception sucks. But at least I get to see the dice on the screen. That's good. Rip. Rip. You... I go blind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... While Alabar's sight came back, yours goes away. <laughs> Oh. Um, you do not see him. He is nowhere the to be seen. Giveth. giveth away. Yeah, you're you're just so enamored with the various tankards of ale that are roaming around. I am enamored by an alcoholic beverage that I do not drink. It's not necessarily a, I want one of those. It's more or less of a, like, why are so many people drinking this early? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. They're alcoholics. <laughs> it's okay. They have a problem. I just, I don't get it, Shell. I don't see how anyone can drink this one. Or this early in the morning. How they can drink that. Wine is so much readily available, and some parts of the community they do drink it in the morning. It's like a morning beverage. It's because they're alcoholics. This like really, really like drunk, like you know, he's missing like five teeth. Three of them are black. Like he's like, who are you calling a drunk? Yeah. Hey, drunk? buddy, can I borrow three gold? She like tilts like, her okay. head. You of course. Yeah, of course. Well, well, you're right. <laughs> I'm a drunk. <laughs> it takes like it takes like a huge swig, and I love it. I'm gonna go up to the uh, drunk guy and be like, "Hey, man, I've never been drunk before. Can I borrow five gold?" You've never been drunk? Nope, never. <laughs> you're missing out. <laughs> You should go get some. And he just, like, kind of, like, stumbles away. He, like, runs into, like, this ha large half orkin fellow who just, like, looks at him and just, like, palms him away. Well, um, while they were having this conversation, drunk man, I want to, uh, un inconspicuously, like, walk away from and find contact. All right. Make a perception check to see if you find him. Or see him around, or... Nice! Yeah. Uh, so... You're looking around. Um... And he's not at the table you were at before, so you, you kind of... Take another look. You you look towards the opposite ends, knowing the way these kinds of people operate. 
There he sits, far corner, single guy. <laughs> Same silver goblet as before. <laughs> Looking around. Bless, Bless you. you. Thank you. Okay. So, sa same way I did before, I'm just gonna uh, walk, calmly walk over there and sit down um, like he was waiting or something. And then, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take out the, one of the pieces of paper that, because the paper and the books have like, because there's like several pieces of paper in the book, they both have like, what I, from what I can tell, like the same code, right? Uh, what, the map and the, the book? Well, no, the book we found that had, I know we found the book, but let me find also some, like, pages on the table that, that the book was on that also was, had, like, their, that special coding that we couldn't decipher. Uh, well, you, you actually, uh, putting together all those pieces of paper, uh, kind of like a puzzle, it, it's actually a map, it's like a map that was crudely drawn on a, on a bunch of different uh, pieces of paper. Oh. So, okay, I'll get to that. Um, so, I want to take the book out of my bag and slide that across the table to him and say, do you recognize, you know, the wording of this at all? I figured I was going to be the one having to bring information. Well, we did we did some investigating on our own. <clears throat> Happened to run into some stuff. Let me take a look at this. He like he takes uh, finishes off a sip of his goblet and he puts it down. He takes the book off the table. He like leans back in his chair towards the corner and he starts flipping through. I mean, some of this is pretty much standard procedure, but um, there's some words here that shouldn't be where they are. I guess they're using a subset of encoding. It'll take me a little while, but I, I might be able to uh, decipher some of this for you. Go. You can go ahead and get started on that. Um, and also, and I want to pull out like the piece of paper, like kind of form the map on the table. I didn't get a good look at this before because I'm kind of in a hurry. Um, but the, does this map at all familiar to you, like the place you would recognize? He kind of looks at it. And now that you're getting a closer look at it, um, it's the shape of Nohaden. It's actually the the shape of your, it, but it's like a crudely drawn version of it. Um, it's you know it, it's it's the entire continent. Okay. Um, and you're you're looking through it, and you see all the major cities, um, but next to it you see. Each each of the uh, the like dots where each of the cities are, um, every city except for or every major city except for um, Helgarun, you see um, like a language. What languages do you know? Just infernal and. Common? Yeah, just infernal and common. Okay, you see a language that you don't understand. Okay, I I point to the the words by each of the cities. Say, what do these say? Um. Hmm. Oh shoot. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. I... I know I've seen this language before, but I don't know where or how long ago. Unfortunately, I can't help you with this one. Sorry, but this seems to be no Hayden, uh, at least from the shape. 
<laughs> Whoever drew this wasn't an artist. <laughs> uh, obviously. Um, and then, I also I want to take another closer look at the map real quick. Is there any other special markings on the map um, other than just like the dots where cities are? Um. Roll. Roll an intelligence check. Okay. So, looking at it, um, you kind of pour over the, the various pieces of paper, um, and each city seems to have a lot of writing next to it like like probably like three lines uh but next to the one for scalamere uh you see a lot more writing probably like seven or eight lines of writing okay that's it yep that's it okay uh, um Thanks for the info. Um, you know, get get started decoding on that uh, book as soon as you can, and just l let me know when you're finished, and I'll make sure you get paid. All right. I don't know how long this is gonna take me, or if I'm gonna need some help. So, costs might vary. Just wanted to let you know. I I understand. I know, I know how it all works. Um, <clears throat> if you find, if you, if, if at any time during, uh, decoding, find any major items that, uh, just contact right away, so that way we, you know, figure out what's going on, where they're heading next, because they're definitely in the city. Because, like, whatever, whatever they, what, or whatever they left down there, they, I don't think they would have left this if they weren't in a hurry. Okay. And then I'll just, you know, uh, I'll just stand up and then just start walking back towards, yeah, you know, I'm going to walk towards the door and just like lean against the do lean against the wall next to the door, waiting for them to, for my party to kind of like be done doing what they're doing. All right. So what are the rest of you doing? I'm just like I'm ruffling like, Luna's feathers, petting her. I'm gonna go up to the uh, uh, the barkeep, and she be like, "Hey, just want to make sure uh, that brawl is happening tomorrow, right?" Yep, sure is. What time? Uh, I think it's uh, 3 p.m. Okay. Thank you, and then I'm just gonna go uh, meet back up with the party. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, is anyone else doing anything? Uh, I'm not. Leah, you doing anything? Um, probably just like playing with T, but nothing important. Okay. So then, if that's the case, uh, when everyone kind of like gathers back towards around the door um I take out the, the page that has the dot of um score halt I want to just take that one out and show it to everyone and say does anybody recognize it <laughs> uh do I recognize this uh I'm sorry it's not score halt I mean, it's the one that with Scalabier mm -hmm. yeah so you have to roll. What what do we have to roll? Uh, you don't have to roll any no, language to, proficiencies. Um, oh. Well, you know. Yeah. What language is it? I. Th no, I we we don't. I don't know what I. Is that's why I'm showing it to y'all. Do any of you do? 
I'll, I'll just make it easier. Do any of you know under common? I do. No. You do. Oh, 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 oh Leah with the mm. So Come Leah. Here, Leah, you you go. Oh yeah, that's just under common. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we go. <clears throat> yes. So um Zaras is still waiting for a response. No one said anything. Well, Leah said that it was undercommon. No. And they said that. So, yeah, uh, anything. <laughs> So, uh, when you uh, start reading this, um, you see a date and time, uh, a location, um, and underneath you also see uh, almost kind of like coordinates. Um, it's like different locations within that city uh it seems like uh you see like uh you know the spire of Paylor, three street west one left you know like it's it, there's like eight lines of this um but seems like there's three separate locations uh, that you notice. But uh, the top line seems to be just a location, a time, and a date. What is the location, time, and date? So... The time is uh, it is at four in the afternoon, and it is Feast of the Moon. Uh, which since you're the only one that's actually able to understand this, uh, roll a, uh, let's, let's say a history check. Okay. Okay. I love that it makes a sound dice. <laughs> so, uh, kind of thinking... Oh yeah, Feast of the Moon. I'm not around. I'm not from around here, but I at least know the the Nords. They they celebrate, um, you know, the winter and the rest and and the nighttime that it brings uh, and appreciate. Uh, it's almost like an an appreciation of nighttime and nighttime animals and uh it's it's almost like there's you know there's Palor who is the god of light and and righteousness and goodness it's almost like a celebration of when he isn't there it's a celebration of um like strength and honor you know, being able to hold one's own. So there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, gladiatorial competitions and you know tests of strength with with this uh, event because the idea is when Paylor is not around, you are there to protect when he is not. 
you are the righteousness. And it's kind of like the general theme around all of this celebration. Along with, you know, food, dance, merriment, as per any festivals or anything. But, um... The location within that city... Let me pull up my notes. Oh, that is the map. I didn't want that. The location is... The Etheric Transfer. What? The Etheric Transfer. And you, having come from the uh, Calicophora, you know that the Etheric Transfer is the main teleportation cent uh, like center of No Hayden. This is, this is where a lot of high-level mages and... Uh, information passes through between uh, etheric gates uh, which is like uh, essentially the the LIRR of uh, you know of the world and when once the date uh, the date uh, it just says Feast of the Moon. Uh, oh. and you, you guys know, uh, with the holidays, uh, there are 12 months with, uh, 30 days each, and there is, uh, five holiday days in the year. And then every four years, there is a holiday known as Shield Meet, uh, which is, um... It's essentially like the World Olympics, and that usually there's like two, three weeks long of of worldwide gladiatorial and, and festivities and things like that. So. Okay. I'm back. So. Uh, do you share this information, Leah, or... Yeah, I'd share this information. Okay. Uh, so it's... It says that at 4 p.m. on the Feast of the Moon at the Etheric Transfer. But that's all the information that there is. It's just date, time, and this location. Um, I think we we should have a closer look at the rest of the map since you're able to read us. Um, let's go find somewhere and get a room. Preferably more, uh, you know, more upkept than across the street. How far away is the Feast of the Moon? Uh, the Feast of the Moon, as you know, is in about two weeks. So it's about, it's about 10 to 14 days off. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's say I I, I put the paper back away in my bag and I say, let's let's go get a room somewhere and, and take a closer look at the rest of the map, find out exactly what's going on here. Um. So, where is the? I take a look at my map. Um. Where is looking at all the inns in the city? Where a like a normal inn, not like a sh shitty one, like a, a decently good <laughs> inn that's nearby. Like the the closest, not rat like, let's say place. Yeah, let's say the closest three star inn. <laughs> yeah, you you stayed in a, at the Red Roof Inn that had two star rating in the middle of Utah. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for that Best Western. Yeah, Best Western. Um, probably the next closest one, uh, is the Grogan Lodge. 
Where is uh, that? It's still in the same district, but it's it's um more closer towards the uh uh like like the next quarter, the you know, the better the next better looking quarter. Okay. I say uh, I just turn to the group and say, follow me. We're gonna you know we're all gonna sit down and try to figure this out. So uh I start walking towards that that inn, I forgot the name, the Grogan whatever. Grogan Inn. The Grogan Lodge. Oh Grogan Lodge, yeah. Yes. So I'll start walking towards Grogan Lodge. Um Yeah. Alright. Um uh, gonna say the rest of you follow. Of course, of course. Alright, so you go all... You all head off, uh, Saris leading the way to the Grogan Lodge. Uh, it's not nearly as run down, uh, it doesn't have broken windows all over the place or anything, but it just, it looks simple, plain, you know, not necessarily cleaned every day, you know. You can see, like, there's, like, cobwebs in corners and things like that, uh, as you walk in the door. Um, it's just very simple, uh, you know, wood paneling and, and wooden, uh, furniture. Uh, you see, uh, on the walls there are, uh, tapestries with various animal skins, uh, woven together, uh, on the floor underneath by a hearth, uh, that is roaring flames uh there's uh like a like a stone uh table essentially and um it looks like uh you just walked into almost like a like just a menagerie of of different furniture uh a very eclectic collection uh, but very orcish in styling. And as you turn the corner, uh, from, the, like, the sitting area to, like, the, um, to, like, the, the help bar, uh, there is a, like, seven foot six full orc just standing there, um, uh, like just uh like busy cleaning uh you know the the bar and he looks uh down at you all and it's it's like evening right uh yeah pretty much <coughs> at this point yeah okay. i just want to like lean on the bar um you know break my neck looking up at him cuz i'm so short and say Good evening, sir. Uh, we'd like the, the the largest room you have with a big, nice table. <laughs> well, that's, that's going to cost you. Are you going to say how much, or are you just, just going to stand there? Yeah, I, I, I just like... tap my fingers waiting for the price. He, like, just looks at all of you, and he, like, looks around the corner to not make sure that there isn't any more of you. Alrighty. He, like, you, you can see, like, it, he has this one tusk that's, like, like, protrudes really, really long, uh, and the other one's kind of, like, snapped off uh, halfway. Uh, he's... He's got, um, his one eye is actually clouded over his right eye, and he has this huge gash mark, uh, that is just pretty much from the middle of his forehead down to the middle of his cheek. Large room for tiny people. Hmm. And he, like, pulls out, um, 
it's not really a book. It's just like uh, it's like bound set of leathers. Like it's it's leathers that have actually been bound in the style of a book. Um, and he like flips through, and he he looks. Four or five, you small people. Five gold shinies. Shell looks yeah. over at Zarius and she whispers audibly, What do you think happened to his face? I'm gonna take a step forward. Uh, Tiny people. You and me are about the same height. You're seven foot six. Oh, you say seven six, I'm seven, okay. <laughs> Because you said, all right, okay, so he's not too much taller than He's not than too me. much taller than you, but. How about we, how about three gold pieces? Because look at these two tiny ones. The, if you stack them on top of each other, they're like the same height as us. Is, is he referencing me and Shao? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I you're mean... smart, man. <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Really? That's. Uh... I mean, I know I'm 5'5, five five, but. I'm 5'4. Five <laughs> Wait. He, he looks that's down. A two. No, that's, no, that's a 20. That's cocked. <laughs> that's cocked. That, that is so <laughs> cocked. But no, no, we're, we're, no, saying, no, we're no, going no. off the normal system here. I know, we're going off the normal system. <laughs> But if we were ruling and we were playing in real life, that would be cocked as fuck. <laughs> I know, Wait, I what? know. <laughs> if you look at the D20, the one that rolled the natural 20, it looks oh, like... Oh, it's like in between. It's, it's like leaning against the other <laughs> dice. I think it's fun. It's like it's actually really cool how it takes physics into effect, because it's like hit the other dice, and so it's not fully on the 20 or the 2. That's hilarious. So, uh, he looks, uh, the, the orc looks at you. You not small person. I trust not small person. Three shinies. And he, like, holds his hand out. And I'm gonna pull three gold out and hand it to him. Just give him Man. three shiny pieces of copper. <laughs> uh, and I also my I respond to Shao like when uh, when she whispers in my ear while of, I guess I'm assuming while they're having while they're, they're having their little conversation mm -hmm. um, I don't know what happened but I don't think I want hey mister hey, what mister, happened what to your, happened face? your face and face slap uh, I'm walking away <laughs> As Alivar takes like three side steps to the side and Zaris like turns the corner, <laughs> there's just little five foot two Shao to this seven foot six, like 350 pound orc just standing there. Uh, as, as he puts, uh, he puts the, the three gold. Uh, in like a chest underneath. You want to know what happened to Throg's eye? Yeah, he, I'm like, interested. He, stares, he like stares at you with like this cloudy, like gelatinous mass. I guess you would call it. Yes, please. I I, I, I would love I would to hear your war story. Throg's brother, Throg. <laughs> no like Throg. He get mad at Throg for stealing wild boar from hunt. Way up in north. Hit me with small hand axe. <laughs> Throg learned not to steal wild boar. 
Ah, uh, that's 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 so mean. Do you want me to shoot him for you? At this point, Zara is just. I broke frog arm. Oh, okay. We we can consider it even then. At, at, at this point, Zara, I grab Xiao's arm and just start dragging her, and say, "Enough is enough." I, I'm not done talking to him yet. Continue dragging. Oh, there's. Oh. Yeah, the conversation's over. The conversation's <laughs> over. <laughs> and then, as I'm dragging her up the stairs, I just poke my head back around the corner and say, Gundor, get the key. <laughs> uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm waiting for the key, and then also while I'm waiting, I'm like, uh, so, smart man like yourself, you make some good grub for the, uh, for the morning? Frog roast, animal, overnight, usually last most next day for customer, like you. Does Shao hear this as they're as she's I, being dragged up the stairs? It's okay, I got this, Shao. I got. got Wait, what did Shao say? You said? I, I was I asking if I heard I, this as I was being dragged up the stairs. Oh, probably not. <laughs> oh, feels bad. <laughs> well, you, you might have heard, like, a word or two, like, hearth, animal, you, customer. <laughs> That's it. Because, like, like I, I would imagine, like, Zaris is just like, come on, come on, let's go, like, just fucking just... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm literally just hammered by the rest and I'm breaking her, because I know she won't walk on her own. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start speaking in orc. And be like, um, is this easier in Do you your know flute art? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know common, celestial, orc, and goliath. Oh shit, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always post it right there. See, it says oh, like wow. Christ, it's the... Oh wow, I did not know that. That's, okay. That's okay. why I always ask, is orc and goliath the same thing? Because gotcha. on, my, on my language sheet, they're both together well gotcha there, remember what he said that it's similar to like uh abyssal and infernal they're like different dialects yeah yeah they're yeah. from they essentially essentially they have like the same alphabet but different words it's so like polish gonna... versus russian you can't understand either of them but they're both completely different languages <laughs> yeah, and then same thing with like portuguese spanish yeah yeah exactly. yeah yeah i remember that yeah, uh, so, so uh, Orc and Goliath are different dialects. It's... Mm. But so Russian. I'm, so I'm gonna just start speaking uh, Orcish in front of him, and I'll be like, hey, is this uh, easier for you to communicate with? You know Throg Tongue. <laughs> I know Throg Tongue very well. <laughs> you smart like Throg. <laughs> he like taps his head. <laughs> and then uh I'll respond back like, Yes, you are a smart man. I am smart just like you in Orkish. But my tiny friend she not smart meat eater she likes plants do we have do you have vegetables that you can cook for her for breakfast he like kind of like leans up against the wall and y you can kind of hear like the wood like creak and bends behind him he's so heavy he just kind of like crosses his arms and he he like thinks to himself really really hard frog have bag of potato in cellar we'll cook for her tomorrow 
Can I actually cook with you tomorrow? <laughs> he like he like chuckles to himself and he, he like he nods. Throg not like others. He like you, not small man. <laughs> All right. Well, I I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you. And I will see you tomorrow. And I'm going to just nod in whatever orcish greeting I need. And then I'm going to start heading up the stairs. Yeah, okay. Um, Zaris, uh, as you uh, get to the room, uh, you realize there are no locks on these doors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, I'll just go right in um it's a fairly decently clean place uh very orcish in style again very a lot of animal hides and uh you know um hay uh you know it's a straw bed um it's a lot cleaner than the other place but very very modest and very tribal in, in styling and I, I, I asked for a large room is it pretty big uh this room has five beds um and like a table with like three chairs so it's it's almost like a hostel but it's it's you know a good size room only three chairs huh well can I go, can three I workable out? chairs there's another fourth chair that's in the corner that has like two broken legs yeah <laughs> um Seeing that there's only three chairs, uh, I'm just gonna quickly, I'm gonna go out into the hall, put my ear up to the door that's like, uh, the, to the room that's right across from us, just to see if you're in there. Uh, roll a perception check. You don't hear anything. Okay, so I'll walk in, or I'll like slowly open the door, and then um, if no one's in there, uh, I'm just gonna move chairs from that room. <laughs> okay. Uh, this room uh, has like eight beds with no table and chairs. Oh. But okay, there's well, no one in there. So. I'll just continue doing this until I'll just continue opening until I find chairs in the room and steal them. Okay. Alright, yeah, and you, you do so, you know, with no problem. Okay. So, once we have five chairs, I sit down and I, like, put the pieces of paper and pull them to the map, and I wait for everyone to get settled. Okay. Everything. As uh, Leah and Alivar, as you guys walk the stair, you see Zaris, like, ducking in and out of rooms you know uh, he pulls one chair out of one room and he goes back he pulls a chair out of another room and you guys are just kind of looking at him like what the fuck is he, is he like barrels between you guys into the room that Zaris is going and uh, when you guys walk in you see Z's like rolling all over one of the beds and, like rolls over and looks at you guys like with his tongue like <laughs> hanging outside oh we're getting kicked out classic husky <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll go take a chair and subsides ours all right i made it back to the room yet yep you endure you come now Better for me to come sit by the table, or would you all rather me stay over here by this door? Because clearly, it doesn't lock. Well, why don't we take that broken chair over there and just wedge it under the door knob? Okay, and I'll walk over, grab the chair from Alvar, walk back to the door after everyone's walked in, and try to prop it up against it to, like, you know, make it to where no one can try to come in. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, these these doors, the the door handles are, are very interesting. Um, it's not like a normal turn door. Um, it's basically just a stick, or or like a like a wooden dowel that's been jammed through the door hole area. And uh, on the inside of the room, uh, it has a rope tied to it. There's a pulley up at the top of the door with a counterweight, and you actually have to push down the the dowel to open it up because it's got like this this lever that opens up into a notch that's been cut to the wall. Okay, so the chair thing would still work if we put it, would it under it. Yeah, it would still work. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. It's just it's it's not something you've seen before. It's just like what the okay, sure. <laughs> All right, now that everyone's sitting, and I have the map laid out, um, it looks like there was there's more right. Uh, I point to uh, Scalamir. Um, I know I know you said what these first two lines were, but there's a couple other lines. What did what did these say? And I kind of point to them, looking to the. Uh, What I know? Uh, yeah, so, um, reading it now, you see, uh, three locations underneath. Uh, you see, uh, the locket. Or, you know, what you would turn to be location. So you see the locket as the first. You see, um,. Sparkles as the second, and you see, uh, which we call it, what's the, uh, the Gilded Adventurer as the third one. And they just have kind of like general location. Info. Hold on, now. Um, I'm actually on this. So one sec. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually a really great idea. Because this is a this is going to be a lot of information on this map that we are not. Sure. Right. Is that being is that being relayed back to us? Yes. Gilded Adventure was the last one. The locket was the first one. The locket was the first one. And then there was... What was it, Anthony? Uh, the middle one was the... Uh, which we call it? Sparkles. Sparkles. Sparkles, yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh... Okay, so Gilded right, Adventure, yeah. Sparkle, okay. and then also what were the first three lines? The was um, the location was what? Uh, what do you mean? The, the location, date, and time. Oh, like that information? Mm. Yeah, that was four p.m. at the. Ethotic transfer on the Feast of the Moon. So wow, this is impressive. What? What? Taking notes. All of you guys are taking notes. <laughs> I knew it. So. I'm not. With this note, like, we're all just sitting at the table not? with, like, our journals. I open. said, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> because like Gundor, uh, Gundor has a journal now, so he, he's like, actually writing this shit down. Um, I mean, when... Zara has a little book that he writes everything down in. When he's like tracking all this, well, he's just writing this down on a blank page of his book. Luna, write this down. <laughs> oh jeez. I'll look back and I'll like be. I'm gonna start like asking questions. 
uh, these places you said, the locket, or, or the, the three things you said, locket, sparkles, gilded adventure, are these locations? Like, when you, when you look at the map and you're looking at it, does that word that I don't understand right there correlate with a location on this map? Gilded Adventure, Sparkles, what else was um, it? The Locket. The locket. And then, the what was the, the original location? How do you spell it? Uh, no. like Ether, Etheric, uh, E T H. E R I C. What is the transfer? Yep. And you. Um, now I'm. And this is in character. I'm not familiar with any of these locations. Um, is, is it, does anyone know? Oh, like what? Where either where any of those locations are? If any of them are even in Scalamere? I mean, I might. I grew up around that area. Um. Yeah. Roll a history check, Alivar. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good thing you don't have disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> so. You do actually know one of these locations, Alivar. This is when you were much younger, probably, you know, between the age of 6 and 12, um, <clears throat> when you would go on business to Scalamere with your father. Um, the locket was a restaurant where your dad met with a lot of people. Okay. All right. Um, I'll relay that group. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll relay that information to the group. Okay. So the locket so, may be a place just like the um, Rusty Tavern. So these are so places. We... Uh, no, it is a very, very high end. Like place, we sip in tea. <laughs> so, if the locket is an actual building, and the in Scalamere, we can assume the others are as well. Um, why does the eth the etheric transfer have a date time next to it? Anything pre anything special about that location? And I just to everyone. Were there dates by the Locket, Sparkles, and Gilded Adventure? No, there's not. Okay, well... One idea... Is... What if... They only have a few weeks to get whatever they need to get done at these three places done? And then, what what town are we? Are we in Scalamere? No, you're in no. Scoreholt. We're in Scoreholt. And let me pull up the map so I can Galamir see. is west of us, on the coast. Like, does it look close to us, or does it look a few days away well, from us? How, if we were to, that was going to be my next question, like, um, but that was, uh, that was going to be towards the end. If we were to, like, go get our horses from, um, Gundor's, uh, town, uh, how long would it would it take for us to get to score a halt or Scalamere, sorry. Well Gundor's hometown is on the way. Scalamere's on the west coast. <clears throat> on map, right? So the Gilded Adventure sparkles at the locket. How, but Anthony, how long? How long would it take? Uh, Us, your and then rode our horses to Scalamere. I mean, it would really depend on the way that you wanted to go. Um, now 
Matt, are you could... dying or something? That sounded like a legal Why? struggle. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, so, you can either go north. Uh, if you were to go west, you could either go north by way of, like, the Silverstone Mind and Ren Renat... Ranba. Sorry. Ranba. Uh, or you could go south the same way that you came and just, uh, you know, instead of going south through Kaldbeck here, you can go to the west uh, by way of Damble. I think north would be faster, wouldn't it? Um... It looks like it. Yeah, the south route probably is going to take rough estimate like eight days north. Seven days. Okay. It's still it's still a major city to major city on horseback, so it's it's a decent ways away. Yeah. Um. What? What's so? Did did um. Sorry. Did Leah share the information about what the? Because she's you said that she would know what the ether was. Yes, it's up to it's up to you, Leah, whether you wanted to share what the etheric transfer was and stuff. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. But, but real life, Rachel doesn't know. <laughs> 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 let me let me look it up. I wrote notes. I did good here. Hey. <laughs> so I would explain that the etheric transfer is the main teleportation center located in Nohaden. Um, this is where only high level mages passes through the key. High level mages pass through and then you cut out. Um, through the gates. Oh. Through the so Eric transfer gate. And that and that in Scalamir? No, it's in Nohaden. No, no Where well Nohaden? it's in it's in Scalamir. <laughs> it's a building in Scalamir. Because yeah. Nohaden no <laughs> the con <world>. oh. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that was in Scalamir. Um So unless I'm assuming incorrect. Um, my first assumption would be that the etheric transfer on the Feast of the Moon at 4 p.m. meeting of some sort. Maybe it's something. It, it, oh, it, 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 it would either be in my in my mind, just um, because I, you know, thinking from the mind of it all, uh, it would either be a meeting with the person who hired them to do some job that they should have completed by that date or it's a um, it's a time and location of one of their assassinations where they know someone's there at, on the, at that time on that day either way I think to be there when this meeting or meeting or assassination is going to happen so we can stop it or get more information if it is some sort of meeting. No, that's a that's a good possibility, but one thing that we might not want to rule out is it also could possibly not be an assassination. They might be trying to get a hold of something. Or maybe they're trying to use the teleportation system for themselves. It was like it was said before that the Black Skull were an assassin group from the south, they're up here in the north. Correct. Yeah, true. So, what if possibly somewhere south, there's also a portal that they could teleport to? Maybe 4 p.m. is their only chance to get back. 
Well, if they well, open, if they a, open portal, a portal, I would definitely know. Well, I mean, teleport. Te the tele using a teleportation spell is different than a portal, shall? Well, it de it depends on oh, like, like the teleportation the school, te the teleportation spell that they are using. Um, but I think we get we should get a bigger picture here. Uh, let's take a look at you know. I want to, like, point to the other cities that have writing next to them and ask Leah what they all say. Nolan! <laughs> Hi. Well, uh, do I have to roll for anything? Like, do I... Well, no, because you know the language, so... Um, the one for Mohavdalaer... Uh, it's Mohab. It's Mohab. Yeah, what? Good. Mohab. Yeah, so Mohab Dalair, uh has the uh, faithful soul as the, uh, you know. guess like location name mm -hmm. okay. um, and actually having been through Mahav the Lair, you all know that uh, this is a brothel Ooh, within brothel. Mahav the Lair. Okay. The Dragonborn brothel? Uh, no, that no. was in oh, no. <laughs> Trust me, that, that, I wouldn't have where brothel was in. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, Alivar would know. <laughs> Well, Hoffman well, is a town, town where my house is, like, oh. south of it, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah. So the Faithful Soul... Kind of a compromise for a brothel, now that I think about it. I'm a Faithful Soul, I'm gonna go to a brothel. Um... So that is the location of Mohav the Lair. Uh, in Skorahalt. Oh, so there's only like one location? That's all there is? Just the yes. uh, location? Yes, no so there's three time. locations. There's three locations in. Um, well, in, you know. Four, uh, four locations in Scalamere. Yeah, four locations in Scalamere, but there's only one location in each of the other ones. And then there's uh, no date and time together. Nope, no date and time. Okay. It's the next uh, city. Squirrel Halt, the Rusty Bed Post, and uh, 3 p.m. at the uh, Adamantine Hearth. Which. <laughs> You all, through your research, have found is the castle. Um, remembering. And 3, 3 p.m. was when the assassination and the speech took place. Oh. Anyway. So, okay. so, as soon as Leah reads that off, it just clicks in my mind Scalamir is their next assassination. And I can bet you anything they're assassinated. They're going to assassinate some sort of wizard that comes through the portal at 4 p.m. But didn't they technically fail in their assassination of the Emperor, since he's alive again? They didn't want to kill him permanently if they didn't use means to prevent his soul from returning to his body. Well, I don't even- I don't know. It was never confirmed whether he was alive or dead by the guard. The guard just said it was- The guard said that he was alive, but he couldn't disclose his condition to us. But he said yeah, that which, he was alive. Which usually means they're in critical condition. But he's okay. alive. To, to clarify real quick with the uh, the notes. Faithful Soul, the brothel, Rusty Tanker is the end. It's no, it's Rusty, Ru Rusty Bedpost. I'm sorry, Rusty Bedpost. And what was the third location? It was the castle, which I... <sighs> 
repeat that one for me, Anthony. Uh, for which one? For Scorehold, the, the name of the castle. Uh, yeah, the the adamantine hearth. But they don't want to no. kill the emperor permanently. Maybe they're just trying to send a message. Okay, so we don't know that. There, so there, there was three locations: the faithful soul, which was in Mohavdalir. Then there was the rusty bedpost, which is in Skorohol. And then this um, Andamanium, whatever you said. Adamant that one Earth. was also. Oh, w w was that one also in Skorohol? That was the Adamantine Hearth yeah. castle that the that the was assassinated at. And PM, which at the time by that location was the time that the king was the king's tempted death was. Okay. But we don't know if the king, because we don't know if not killing the king was their intention or not. Because if you think about it this way, one, their blade could have been poisoned. So the king could still technically be alive for now, but who's to say the poison will kill, you know, within the next day or two. Number two, they could, because of how many people were there and how quick our reactions were, maybe they didn't get a chance to finish the job like they were planning. So we may have, you know, slightly foiled their attempt, sat, uh, their attempt to assassinate on. Anthony, is it reasonable to say that the king would have access to a spellcaster that's able to cast through resurrection? You don't know. I mean, it's the king, surely. You yeah. have to. Because if that was the case, then it would have cured the poison that was inside of his body. Well, I'm sure he and has something. And they can something. also use restoration spells as well. I'm, I'm sure they. I'm sure he has something, but we have to assume that with, you know, with any assassination, we have to assume that they're always going for the kill. But if, they were just, if these if are, if these just are blood trained what? assassins, they would know no, how to no. keep somebody permanently dead, and they didn't do it with him. They probably, okay. like I said, probably didn't have the time. If they, if if we if, if we weren't there, with how much probably... preparation went into their assassination, they most definitely had time to prepare. Okay, then um, no, I'm saying they didn't have time during the assassination itself because we were there. Then why would we reacted somebody... we reacted quicker? Than Anybody else? There are, there weapons, are weapons that can, that can be that made can... to prevent resurrection, right, Anthony? Uh, like that wouldn't that be wouldn't... too out of the, out of the, the park, park to say that, like, that... there's something that can prevent a resurrection on a weapon. I mean, I've it's... never heard such. There is the potential for it. Um, it's not necessarily magic that is practiced commonly, because. You know, things but like that. But a band of, like, trained like, assassins that are, like, potentially to it do depends this. On what, it depends on what kind of connections they have and maybe what knowledge they might know or have located. But they would but they def would def if they deal with high-profile high targets like this on a regular basis, then they would definitely know how to keep somebody dead. Yeah, the potential is there, so... Okay. But you can't be sure. Okay. So, What's well, we, like, let's, like, like, Good. Let's take a five minute break. Um, and I'll give you guys the last bit of information when we get back. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wasn't, wasn't cut you off, off so many times. times. Uh, uh, Matt. Matt. Yeah, that's good. What were so, you going to say, though? Uh. I'll I'll just wait till we get back in the game. It's like So where do you guys think the next uh, attack's gonna Well The the next attack I think because there's only one other city left. And unless that date is already in the past, the next assassination is definitely Scallop, scallop. Uh, 
but actually, I'll I'll say what I was actually going to say. I get back. Yeah, but the only place we know in, uh, Scalamere was the locket, right? Yeah, but I, I have an idea of what the locations are, so, like I said, we'll just look at the hands that way, part of the company. No, no, yeah, I get you. I was just trying to understand why we were thinking, or you were thinking, that the next assassination was going to be there. I just wanted to try to catch up real quick. I'll, I'll, I'll. Someone just messaged me on Discord when back though. No. Alright. So why would some from not killing the king? This group of seven. A like, fuck ton of money. There's no way. So, assuming the... Okay, I'm not going. Yeah, you are. Might be echoing through someone else's mic. And then I... I don't think anyone... Yeah, I think it's Anthony's mic. Stop what I'm doing. Is that what you were waiting for? You're cute. I go make daddy some breakfast. sure you're gonna make them because I don't want dinner time to come around and you don't make them
Love you. I repeat, she's coming down. <sighs> Copy oh, that. We gotta, we gotta go to Memos. Whiskey Tangle Foxtrot, what? The bogey is descending. Do you have a clear visual? That's negative over. Checking in about two clicks. That two clicks happened way too fast, man. Copy that, Niner Niner. No, alright, I'm back. Bogey's in the kitchen. Drop the bomb. And fire at will. Uh, I'm getting a toothache. Let us see. So, we're gonna get into some combat this episode? <laughs> Probably not. I'm dying- I'm dying to test out this greatsword that I've got, and I still have not- that, that is just a common trend in this campaign. Gundor gets a greatsword, he can't use it for like five episodes. Hmm. Well then, I st maybe you yeah, should just stop pinching on, uh, <laughs> on greatswords. Or uh -oh, maybe you should, you know, let me have my fun. <laughs> I'm back. What did I miss? Oh, uh, me coming back? I w <laughs> yeah, you missed Anthony coming back. But um, I said, are we going to have some combat this episode? And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's just a common trend for Gundor. Gundor gets a new sword, he can't use it for five episodes. <laughs> and then Anthony was like, well, maybe you should stop getting great swords. And I'm like, well, maybe you should, you know, let me have my fun. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Is is Rachel back also? Rachel you back? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. That's a negative box <clears throat> shot. Whiskey Tango Fox Strut. <laughs> Are we clear for takeoff, Niner Niner? Over and out. Eagle is in the microwave. Is the puck in your playing field? <laughs> I don't want a good word today. I don't either. He'll go. What'd you do, Matt? Pick up that cell phone and you say, Hey, Logan, I can't come into work with you today. <laughs> and then he's going to work by himself and it's going to be okay. It's Labor Day, everybody's working. Labor Day's tomorrow, bro. Well, today. Uh, oh, shit, oh shit, that's shit, right. I don't right. work tomorrow because Labor Day. Lucky you. I forgot about I that. What'd you forget about? Lucky you. That I don't have I to work tomorrow, that she didn't work tomorrow. Only holidays my place has is thanks. Wait, no. I, I, I get Thanksgiving and Christmas off and that's it. Aren't you working yeah. retail? I get yeah. Christmas and Easter off. What? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Easter's random as shit. Yeah. Why huh? not Thanksgiving? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think... This Black Friday's like the day after. Wait, so they give you a religious holiday <laughs> off, but they won't give you like just a standard American holiday off? Yeah. But if that you get to work that holiday, sense. you make over. Retail's very uh, PC. Well, I work yeah, retail. Like... I work. I work at Walmart. And we get Thanksgiving, and Christmas off. The only the reason only for that is because the state has the law though that you can't work on those holidays. 
Oh, not what, what, what was the law called again? Collar. It was like the blue collar law, something like that? I don't remember. Not here. Well, it was oh, like Matthew, yes, I didn't even notice your message. Sorry. What message? You're Wait, casting chat. magic missile in the darkness. Uh, good luck with what? that. <laughs> I get the meme, it's okay. There's Where's the, the Mountain Dew? Do? In the fridge! Oh wait, John. that's right, it's from that from one, that like, one radio, radio show or whatever, right? John, Frankie wants you to meet her halfway. Bitch. Not right now, though. <laughs> Did you just <laughs> close your girlfriend a bitch? <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I do, but... No, <laughs> <laughs> but Whoa, man, well, you can get yourself some pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a pet. It's just a bad thing. No, in that situation. Let me clarify. Let me, like, let me try to, like, get myself out of this hole. Remember, we're live right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah. Um. Give shovel. First off, first, yeah, I'm, like, I'm just grabbing my shovel and I'm just digging my hole right now. <laughs> first off, um. I said bitch just because of the situation I felt needed it because I'm like, shit. But I didn't say shit. I said bitch. <laughs> and uh, secondly, I don't. I never call her a bitch in a mean way. I never go, "Oh, you're a bitch." I, I don't ever, ever say that to her. But like, sh we playfully cuss at each other, and she'll call me like an asshole or a dick, and I'll just call her a bitch. You well, asshole, dick, like, bitch. <laughs> Hey, but no, I, I, I fucking love that. It's fucking, it's a classic D&D meme. How I many cast viewers mag we got right now? <laughs> I cast Magic Missile! At what? At, at the darkness! darkness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you cast Magic Missile at the darkness. It does nothing. Accurate. <laughs> Take my head set off. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> so, how many viewers we got? Three. Uh, hello, Twitch. We need to average five, five more than that for a sponsorship. <laughs> Five more? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they, yeah it's like, like, like D&D isn't very popular on streaming platforms, so usually it only takes like an average of like 8 to eight. 15 viewers to get sponsored. You well, know, 20 I think looks for like 25 or something, but we're, we're like a diverse group. Um, Like usually they sponsor groups that are pretty diverse. You... I, I actually, I was looking into maybe the reason why our numbers aren't so high. We don't I... use cameras, for one. Well, that's number one, but number two is uh, High Rollers streaming right now. God. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it's UK, so it's probably like... It's like mid-afternoon for them. Yeah. Well, even, well, even when we were, were like streaming like... Saturday nights, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I just remember that one good day we had. Where we had like I know we had like we had like we had consistent eight nine viewers most of the stream. I think that I think was, that was when, when you guys tuned in, was which bumped us bumped up on the viewer up. list, which made it so more people like recognize the stream. Well, but it was also it was also the day that we streamed on like a weekday during the day. Yeah, it wasn't it a weekday was during the day, was it? I, th yeah, I it thought that like, it was Saturday morning. It was like on a Monday. It was uh, Memorial Day, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was Monday morning. Yeah. I'm fine for Monday morning. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Hey, yes, I mean... well, I'm not coming into work today. I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell your boss I... you need Mondays off. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, all up know. to you guys. If you guys ever want to change our game day, that's fine. We can we can change the game day. I just need to know like a week ahead of time so I can be like, hey, look boss lady i need tuesday off 
Like, er, I don't know when it's gonna be able to be. 6 a.m. on Sunday. You're cutting out. Oh yeah, uh, we might have to. All right, we might since right now we're all here. We're either gonna have to decide next week we won't be able to play, or next week we gotta choose another day because sun next Sunday Matt's gotta go in at 6 a.m. Okay. Ooh. Um. Saturday night. Do we want to? Friday night. Saturday Friday morning. Friday. I have to go in. I have to oh. Uh, I work at I work on Friday, so if we could do if we were gonna do Friday night, we wouldn't be able to start until like thirty Eastern. Um, but if we did if we did Saturday night, I would have Saturday off to start like you know just in the evening at like seven or eight p.m. or whenever you guys wanted to start. Okay, yeah, we're not available Saturday, so. Okay, Thursday night. Uh, I don't. I don't. Thursday? You, you don't want to go on Thursday night. We, we, I'm off. We just, yeah. Thursday, Thursday itself for D and D is just cut off. You're not allowed to do anything on Thursdays anymore. But <laughs> critical that's role. When, that's when critical role streams. So like, uh, you're gonna get zero watchers. So you know, me. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You're you're actually going to end. I think the the physics, the way it works, you end up with negative viewers if you uh. streamed on Thursday. It's true. Yeah. Is it the first? No, no, today's the first. Okay. Uh, so I'm off today. I'm off Tuesday. I'm off Thursday, and I'm off Friday. So mm. I can. I don't know if any of those days sound good. Well, like I said, I, I'd be done Friday. I just don't get up till ten. So. Okay. Yeah. Well. I mean, I can do a late game Friday night. Uh, I have work in the morning Saturday. Oh. All right. Well, we will we'll we'll figure, will it figure it out. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, yeah. Yeah. No. No issues. All right. Hopping Rachel back. back yet? Yeah, mm -hmm. Rachel's back. Hey. Okay. Hey. So. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So as you guys are looking uh, at the last uh, note on the map. Uh, for Larbreca. Um, it is... Uh, oh, where the hell is that? <laughs> I, I, not, I, I think that's the first time I've heard that sit. Oh, yeah. it's up north. Holy shit. It's way up north. <laughs> uh, Holy fuck. The location that you find there is uh, the Sore Nut Pub. <laughs> Sore, the sore nut, nut pub. pub. The sore nut pub. Yep. <laughs> Got to be a brothel too. Got brothel to be. slash bar it has to be. <laughs> That's most likely a gay bar or a slash gay brothel. Probably a really aggressive. <laughs> okay. So now, so that was all of the locations that had anything, any writing, right? Yes. Yes. So now to my hypothesis, because we thought they all met up at the Rust Tavern after the assassination. But the Rusty Bedpost is right across the street from the Rusty Tavern. And that's where we slept, the, actually. The secondary locations on the two, for both Scoraholt and Scalamir are the locations that they meet, that they're meeting or, uh, or wherever or the, the location that they're gonna go, or most uh, for their like after the assassin, most likely. So, you know, uh, so after they assassinated or attempted to assassinate the king at 3 p.m., they all through the sewers to get to the rusty bed post, and their their sewer hideout was also right there near the rusty bed post as well. So, I can almost bet you that if we went to each of these cities and went to the location of, we went to the Sornut Pub or the Faithful Sour in Mahogdalir or La Breca, we would, uh, if we searched hard enough, we would find where they were going out in that city and, you know, maybe find some information. But I think we got lucky information at the time because they were in such a hurry to get out because of how quickly. Yeah. 
But either way, the, o the only location with a date next to it that's left is Scalamere. So I think we need to start heading over there, be sat to, and start scouting out the area of area for whatever's gonna happen. Beast of the 4 p.m. We need to get in front of this. No. I agree, but it still doesn't answer the question as to why they aren't killing their targets. We, like I said, we have to assume with a with with a, with an assassin's guild. There, we have to assume that their intent is to kill, and that they just made a mistake this time. Because if their if their intent wasn't to kill, they would more, they would call themselves assassins. If they'd call themselves a terrorist. Is it really I mean, logical, logical want... to assume that that, that, that they that would they make would a mistake make... on their largest hit that they've ever done? Like, they would I obviously have their best members best. on this. I don't think I that don't... this is a mistake that they would have made. We don't know unless if this is Unless it was intentional. Their... We, don't, we don't know if this is ever their largest. They're not even from the area. They're, yes. they're, they're, they're an assassin group. We have to assume that their intent is to kill. We just I, I have think to that go off the sound. factors. Well, we have to go off some extra <laughs> factors here. One, they possibly were here to kill. Well, they were here to kill the king. But one factor is us. We came into play, and that messed up their mission to some extent. Secondly, I don't know about you guys, but what type of assassin has some type of electric uh like a fire or lightning canister weapon like that doesn't seem very assassin to me so maybe they were experimenting with something new i don't know maybe there was something more here i don't know either way they're called an assassin for a reason until we find information that points us in another direction we have to assume that their intent is to kill which I, which is why I'm willing to bet that the date and or Scalamere, the date of another assassin. I can agree that it's the date for another assassin, but I don't believe in your logic that their intent is to kill. Because if their intent was to kill, the Emperor would be dead. Well, how do you know that they're still not here trying to make sure that's going to happen? Well, if they're still here, then wouldn't that make the information that they have on their... On, on this list irrelevant? Well, it also means that we were close, but we weren't close enough. It means that we were looking in the right area, but not the right location. Like, we just figured oh. out. We were trying, we were looking in the sewers, trying to find them. We, we were thought they were going back to the iron, uh, I mean, the rusty tanker. Rusty tanker. Now we found out that it's not the rusted taker that they were possibly going after, or were trying to return to. Either way, we need to not make us. We need to make assumptions with what information that we do have, rather than information that we don't. Which is why we need to assume that they, they, they're is to kill. Because nine times out of ten, an assassin's group intent is to kill. So until we find an assuming that their intent was to kill is the same as assuming that their intent wasn't to kill. If they're an assassin, we don't have else? sufficient do. information to support either theory. Both of them are theories. What what uh, what uh, what what else do assassination groups do? They assassin. They hold influence. They hold power. They have a network that they use. That's a thief. No, that that's not only thieves. Either way. We just need to use what information we have instead of assuming information we don't. You are so assuming until, information. Uh, so, until we get more information, I think this is all we can, you know, this is all we know at the moment. Uh, so, I, I, I want to look to um, uh, Alivar and say, you know, you said you've been to Scalamere a couple of times, right? I mean... I've been there a handful of times when I was younger and, I don't know, through the ages, I guess. You don't... 
go. Do you, do you even do you at the least, at the very least, uh, re remember or can think of what the other two buildings, or what the other two locations in Scalamere are? The Sparkles and Guild Adventure. I mean, if I had to make an assumption, I'd say the Gilded Adventures. It's either a magic shop. Same with sparkles. <coughs> oh, do what I know either of those two shops? Uh, which one? Uh, sparkles I've... or Gilded Adventure? Um, say, uh, roll a history check. Okay. Uh, where's my cheat? There it is. Ooh. Okay. Um, you don't know of Sparkles, um, but the Gilded Adventurer was a steward that your dad did a lot of business with. Um, not only did they have their wares that they showed to the public, but they also had their wares that they showed to only those of people who had special dispensation connections were very important. And this is the reason why your father did a lot of business with them. So... Looks like Scalamere may be a base of operation for the both. You're, you're kind of, you're, I think you're talking a little quiet right now. Uh, so. <laughs> looks like Scalamere is for both guilds potentially. And I'll relay the information about the Gilded Adventure to the rest of the group. Um. So the Gilded Adventure is a adventure shop, but it's also a black. It would appear so. My I father did business uh, there a lot of time. I wonder if the map maker here in town would also carry a map of other places, like other cities. Well, most of the time, um, you know, cities the er, cities only carry maps of. The, the city, the surrounding areas, or and or cities. So, uh, but I can go check. But, Maybe that would, um, you know, help us for sure. No, yeah, this is the place we need to go. Because Squirrelhold is the capital of Nohaven, right? Uh, yes. So, with them being the capital, they might have a map of at least all of the other major cities. Um. So, I, I think that's an I think that's enough brains group brainstorming for now. Uh, I suggest we. I'm gonna go. Well, actually, what time? Uh, right now it's probably with all the conversation and figuring out. It's probably about nine thirty ten o'clock. When did the shop close? Uh, most shops close at about you know nine to five, but restaurants. You know, it's normal hours typically so with with the cartographer still be open probably not cartographers are very specialty items so they're probably nine to five kind of places well, <coughs> we could go tomorrow and that yeah. way i can still do that brawl right or if it's not we important should, we should all sleep on it and you know yeah, if anyone thinks of anything else, you know, just, you know, let, let, let the group know. We'll see, see if we can figure anything else out about this. Alright. So you all bending down for the night? Yep. But well, I'm gonna wake up early so I can, uh, go downstairs and help the orc cook breakfast. Okay. 
So you all bed down. Beds aren't exactly the most comfortable, but it's definitely better than where you slept the night before. Um, still a little lumpy. Still, you know, you gotta like punch your pillow a couple times to like soften it up enough to like put your head down. But you'll find yourself to sleep. Eight hours goes by. Gundor, you wake up. Go downstairs. The rest of you sleep in till the sun starts coming up at around, you know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. Um, you've been up helping Throg. Uh, and Throg, uh, when he sees you come down, he's got this, uh, this barrel of, uh, uh, of alcoholic beverage, uh, that when he sees you, he picks up with his one hand and, and, like, gives you a cup, like, some of it, like, splashes onto the floor, and, like, holds it out to you, and, and as you come down the stair. Throg ah. gives Grog. Ah. Okay, um, yes, yes. So is he offering me a drink, or is yes. he offering... Okay, okay. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take a drink. Okay. Um, it's not good, but you can definitely tell it's strong. <laughs> Uh, Throg probably makes his own Krog <laughs> from the way that at, it tastes. I take a look at him like, oh, is this an? Uh, and I say, I say this in orc. Is this an old like orc family recipe? He like he like raises his his glass to you and Mama taught Throg. Good grog. Takes like a long swig and he slams it down on the table, spills out. Mama taught you well. I can tell there's a lot of alcohol. <sighs> now, and I'm gonna like, uh, like grab, um, just, just part of like, like some type of wrap so I can like put my hair up. And start cooking. Okay. Let's let's get to work. All right. And you can already see on the. Uh, it seems like Throg uh, pulled out a uh, like a large uh, spit roast, and uh, there is currently an entire deer on the spit roast on the hearth as this fire is is crackling. It's skinned. I'm assuming. Yeah, it's it's skinned, okay, prepared, okay. <laughs> everything, but it's like literally like an entire deer, it's like, like in through like its in mouth, through... out through its anus. Yeah, basically, yeah. And it's just it's rotating. And just oh, this looks there. good. Gundor, from your training, well, you would know that it's not but... going to cook evenly that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to like. You know, be like the friendliest assistant ever. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Have you ever tried cutting it up in portions, though? That, that's what I ask him. I ask him, does he ever try cutting it up in portions? No, I know, I know. Uh, Throg, like, looks at you, and he, uh, he, like, Throg clean and cut and put on spit, no? Oh, it looks great. It looks great, and this, I'm sure, is going to be delicious when it's done. But if we were to take this off now, and we were to cut the belly, and then put it back on, we could cook the whole belly, and it would be done sooner. And then we can cut off the other sections and then put it back on there. And get that cooked. What you're doing here, it's gonna cook uneven. You want s 
strong, meaty taste, yes? Throg like strong, meaty taste. And I'm just gonna be like, show me okay, not okay. small man. Okay, so um, uh, I'm gonna we're gonna take the uh, deer off. He did he did he uh bleed it? Like did he like cut it and get all the blood out? Yeah, yeah. Like he 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 did basic butchery prep. You know, he cut and gored it, and you know, you know. Ba did the basic preparations anybody would do. It's just, he didn't cut the hindquarters off. He didn't, you know, split the split the rib cage. Like, he, he just... Basically, the basic butchery technique of when you bleed the deer, that's basically how he put it onto the rack. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to take the deer off the rack. We're gonna, th uh, we're gonna clean an area, put it back down on a surface. Uh, I'm gonna get a knife, and um, I'm gonna look at him and be like, "You're probably better at cooking than me, but I just have a few ideas to help you." Um, and I'll, and I'll be like, "We're gonna cut this section off first. We're gonna, I'm gonna be pointing at the belly. We're gonna cut this off first. And then we're gonna season it, and then we're gonna put it back on the flame. And as and before we start cutting, I want to grab a few more pieces of log and throw it into the fire to get the fire going more. Okay. And then I'm gonna uh, I want to cut the belly off. Do I need to make a roll for that? Nope. Uh, I would okay. just you know what I would just say let's do a single cooking check. Uh, and what is that again? Is that my dex? Where you're using uh, a knife. It's like knife I work. S I, I would say... Because this is butchery. Uh, and it, it's trying to butcher an entire deer. I would say this is with strength. Okay. So 1d20 plus 4. Okay. Um so you um you know you start cutting and and slicing um they're not they're not the cleanest cuts. Uh they're they're a little jagged on the edge mostly because <laughs> it's already been cooking for like 2 hours so it's like starting to break apart and and come apart like like slow cooked meats do uh and uh you know some some of the meat is actually uh, the more done meat is starting to like actually part and kind of like to that like almost brisket uh kind of like breaking apart yeah i will say I'll, i i I'm, this is probably something i should have said before uh i'm not sure if it'll change anything or help anything I will say I also probably would have tied the meat together when I put it back on the rack mm -hmm. and probably cut off any parts that I saw that were already cooked. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, you're, you're still, you're cutting it up. Uh, they're not the cleanest cuts and, and you know, you've messed a few cuts up and you're like, okay, Throg probably doesn't know. So what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Uh, but you get it all up on, but it's kind of a, a, a hack job of, of cookery. <laughs> but it's not bad food? But it's not bad food, it's just, okay. you know, your hindquarters... Okay. Like, but, yeah. some pieces are, like, overcooked compared to others and that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just because your cuts weren't clean and, and you weren't able to cut exactly <laughs> where you thought you would and stuff and then um after that we would have um i would have went checked his potatoes uh probably skinned them if there was any like if it, it looked like some stuff was growing on and i'm gonna cut that off okay 
And then, uh... Yeah, you're, like, you're, like, cutting the eyes out of, like, cooked potatoes at this point. Because he just basically... It seemed like he just, like, took whole potatoes and, like, just... Threw them in a pot? Them... <laughs> yeah, basically just threw them in a pot to roast. So is the you water, like, all black with dirt? <laughs> <laughs> They were cleaned, uh, but you know they're they're not skins. They're not de-eyed. <laughs> Does he have um, any more potatoes in his uh, barrel? Uh, I mean he had a sack of potatoes, so okay. there's like half a sack. All right, um, I'm gonna go over to where the deer was being cooked. I'm assuming we're all done with the deer. I'm gonna take the deer off, and then I'm gonna put a bowl over the fire. And, um, like a big, like a big cooking bowl, if there's one available. And I'm going to put some water in it, skin the potatoes, some, some new potatoes that he did not touch, make them look good, uh, drop them in the water, uh, come back 15 minutes later, pour the water out, cut the potatoes, and then, um, Put the potatoes back in, and I'm gonna cut up some carrots, and that I have because I have uh, carrots and uh, some other vegetables that I'm mm -hmm. gonna cut up that are gonna be going bad soon. I'm gonna cut them up and throw them in with the potatoes, and mix that together, and then like 10 minutes later, I'm just gonna pour that out and be like, all right, that's that's what I cooked for shall. Can I do one more? Uh, I would say uh, another cooking check for that entire endeavor. Because this is something that I did, so hopefully mm -hmm. this will turn out better. Iron Chef No Hayden. <laughs> yeah! Okay. Yeah, you've cooked stuff like this before uh, for, you know, the group while on your travels, so, you know, it's fairly... It's fairly easy, you know, you doctor it up a little bit with a little bit of salt and pepper. Some sprigs of thyme and stuff, but yeah, it's it's a good looking roast. And then I'll just pull my little uh hair tie out, drop my hair and be like, alright, food's ready. What time is it by this time? I would say that by the time Gundor is finishing up, you all have awoken, grabbed your stuff. And work done coming downstairs. I'm feeding Luna another rat. Okay. <laughs> How many friendship hearts do I have with her? Luna <laughs> is slowly turning into an Oompa <laughs> <laughs> Like today, she's just the size of a bowling ball. <laughs> but I believe better like three rats. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, I've, I've fed her four rats so far. Today. It's a new day. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys come down to uh, Throg and Gundor, uh, pulling like like Throg currently has like uh, the the one side of the spit on the f and the other in his hand. And he's like pulling the one leg off, and he's got like one one of the deer legs in his hand, and like he's got like the spit with like two sections of rib cage <laughs> on it. <laughs> Small person, come down, eat with Throg and Gundor. Who is he talking to? All you guys coming down the steps. Oh, okay. So you all sit down. Um, Throg sees uh, uh, Z. And Z is just kind of like sitting there, like eyes wide, looking at like basically this entire deer just laid out in front of him. And shall grab oh. a piece of meat and give it to Z. I also oh, yeah. want friendship po points with Z. <laughs> <laughs> friendship points with Pupper? Yeah. Doggo, Doggo needs to be a shell's friend. 
<laughs> so, um, just like any dog that uh, gets to have a little piece of chicken from the table, uh, you almost lose your hand. <laughs> Um, Saint that he's ravenous, she grabs a deer leg and just throws it on the ground for him. <laughs> okay. Um, he just starts going to town at that deer leg. The throg, no. the throg looks at him. <laughs> Small doggo like throg cooking. <laughs> Shout looking at the else. meat, she's like, yeah, I'm yeah. glad he's enjoying it. Oh, shell for you. Yes, yes. And I, I go over and I pull out a plate and uh, a fork and I lay it and I lay it out in front of her. I uh, made that for you. Uh, just some salted vegetables and uh, or seasoned vegetables, uh, better yet. And everyone else, we have meat. Thanks, Gundor. That was yeah, very thoughtful. Very no problem. So yes, so you have your selection of, of various deer meats, as well as a bowl of boiled potatoes. With um, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Everybody else has to eat his version of boiled <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't throw his away. <laughs> I've, had, I've had boiled potatoes. Since before that my mom those once like yeah but these weren't like they, they still had the potato uh, eyes in them and they weren't skinned oh uh, like that's true yeah so <laughs> they're, <laughs> like, I, I, they're just potatoes that were thrown in water Zara, Zara just waves it off I'm like I'm sure it'll be okay with butter <laughs> Shell looks at Zara and she's like eat one Okay. She says so, that with like a like smile, a smile on her face. I'll, I'll grab a potato. Potato. As I'm loading up the plate, I'll grab a grab a potato. Then I'll take like a small knife from my bag, start like pulling the skin. Um, and then, you know, like taking out any of the eyes. Uh, is there butter on uh, the table or on the bar? There is no butter on the bar. Two minutes last one. Guys, have butter? <laughs> I don't. I don't. All right, let's go milk a cow. <laughs> <laughs> um. What? Okay. Get the Tupperware container and like shake it real hard until you have butter. I just want to see wanna... his face when he eats this very, very bitter potato because the <laughs> eyes weren't taken out before cooking, <laughs> and they were not seasoned. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to see his, like, super, like, sour, sour. face when he bites <laughs> into this. This is um, our What's your constitution, what's your by the way? What? What's your constitution? Nine, I think. <laughs> um, hold on, I'm just looking, though. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I still have those. I forgot. Oh wait! Oh no! Wait! Did we sell those? Didn't we sell the frog hemoth teeth? No, we, we no, haven't we... sold any of the oh. frog hemoth parts. Have we? Have we? Oh yeah. No, I don't think we have. At this no, point, they're, they're like just expired in your bag. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm like I, in my inventory. I still have twenty frog hemoth teeth listed. I'm like, oh, we still have those. Does the oh, bag of holding prevent rotting? No. No oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, no. It's only been... It hasn't been too terribly long. It's uh, been like, it's like a month, a hasn't month. it? It's no. been about... It's been a... Like two weeks, I thought. Two weeks. Cause that, that was back in Mahab de Lear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was yeah, a while ago. Like, we traveled from Mahab de Lear to the top of the continent while stopping oh, no. at the trial. trial. But it's, but it's... Like I said, I think it was two weeks, about two weeks. I would say it's more about three weeks. Cause... You took about about a week and a half of travel. You spent about a week and a half there. After the frog hemoth. Maybe. Um, I think my uh my character sheet might be a little bit wrong. Um, you, didn't you say the dragon tail bracers give me uh oh no mind that's I I I I'm very good. I thought I should have had 20 AC on that. 
No, no. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll see him eat his potato. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything. I don't have any butter or anything to put on it to make it more flavorful. Alright, so you cut the, the eyes out and uh, you and take just, a bite. Yeah, I'll just like chop a little piece off and bite it. Okay. The first piece is good. It's a potato. You know, it still has the skin on it and stuff, but... No, I peeled it. Oh, I you peeled, peeled it? Like a, I, yeah, I peeled the potato and cut the eyes out, and then I like okay. chopped it into bite-sized pieces. Okay, yeah, it's a boiled potato. And, okay. you know, as you, as you eat it, it's still pretty good. So you say, you know what, you know what, fuck it, I'll just... And you take a bite into it, and like... The middle third is just raw potato. <laughs> you just sit there with this like, like I'm, I'm just harsh, partially raw potato in your hands. I, I, I <laughs> once I taste the like raw potato, I like stop chewing, like potato. And then I just like slowly potato back on the the plate, and you know, um, is the orc looking at me? Uh, yeah, he's looking at you. Oh, he swallows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will slowly continue chewing and uh, swallow. It is bitter. It is. It is a raw potato. <laughs> Uh, and then I just grab like an extra like utensil sitting around. I grab a piece of the good potato. Okay, I'm alright. <laughs> and I uh, I put it down in front of Zarius. Try this one. I promise. Just try this one. We'll try that one. It's a decent potato. <laughs> this one was okay. spiced a little bit. You know, it's got salt and pepper on it. And you know. And then I, I look at I look at Zaris and I nod. These potatoes you've had were really good, right? Very good. All right. Hey, he likes your potatoes. Throg make good potato for small people. That's right, buddy. You made the best. And I'll I'll just. Kind of ignoring the rest of the potato that's on my plate for the rest of the meal, I'll just eat my uh, continue, eat my meat. And when when the rock's not looking, I'm gonna throw the potato. Do you think Z's gonna eat it? <laughs> just dogs will eat almost anything. <laughs> not a raw bitter potato. <laughs> not when they have a leg like of a deer in front of them. <laughs> Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> yeah, Z is is enamored with the leg right now. He's like chewing on like the lower leg bone right now. He's got it like in his hands and he's just chewing on it. Okay. Well I was gonna Zaris is gonna quickly finish eating though. And then um he's just gonna look to Gog and say, Thanks for the meal and I'm gonna start to walk out the door and say, um, you know, got some stuff to do, I'll catch up with you guys later. And he's gonna I'm gonna Don't And as as Zaris is walking out, don't forget the map shop. That was one of my things on my list. Well, so I don't didn't worry. Know. I didn't know it was still <laughs> But that's a, yeah, that's the first place I'm going. Actually, is uh, when I hit when I leave at the cartographer shop. Okay. I'm just gonna so, help the work clean up the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, I'll say it's easy enough. You find the shop. Um. You do not find uh, any maps of other cities 
Uh, you do find maps of the surrounding area and Nepaden, different regions of Nepaden, but not of those cities themselves. Um, specifically for the reason that cities are ever changing, and if he had, if that cartographer had to deal with every city besides Squirrel Halt, he'd go fucking crazy. So he doesn't even, he only has maps of the surrounding area. Right. Well, surrounding area and, and like, Squirrel Hall itself. So, seeing as he doesn't have a map that I will then uh, head back. I want to go back to Rusty Tinkered because I want to talk to, um, my contact. I have a question. Okay. Uh, so going there, you do not see him. Uh, no amount of looking, uh, you do not see him. I know it's description. Do I, um, where, if he, did, did he leave anything behind that would need to, like, where he is? No, not really. I mean, it, it's a bar, so, like, he can't really leave anything. I mean, he did say he might need some help. Uh, he can't be at the bar 27, I guess. He'll probably be back. Um, and the other thing I want to do is I wanted to go find a jeweler shop. A jeweler shop? Yeah. I got some shit to sell. Alright. So... Looking around, um, you know that uh, there is a jeweler shop called uh, Jay's in uh, the uh, Cedar Meadow District. Um, there is also a jeweler um, in the... Uh, what do we call it? District. No, there's just J's. Uh, at least that's marked on the map as like a big location. So no, the jeweler's on the map. Uh, I mean, you could probably look around and try to find one, but that one's specifically on the map. Okay, I'll go to that one then. Okay. Uh, so, you walk in, um, you know, there's a little bell on the door, it's, it's in one of the, it, it's in the, uh, the, whatchamacallit, the, um, uh, what district is it? Yeah, Cedar Meadow District, which is kind of like the, uh, the middle class district almost. Okay. Um, you see a um, an elven gentleman hair back uh, kind of uh, yellowish skin. Um, everything in here uh, all the jewelry is is very embellished. It's all very uh, like plant based it's all leaves and ivy intertwining you know it, like the metal work is made to portray nature a lot of these pieces that you're looking in these cases and things my, like that my uh, can I help you 
Yes, um, I have some jewelry that I that um, to sell. Uh, yeah, it it just um, uh, yeah. What well, what can I oh. help you with? Yeah, I I dig through see. my bag and I pull out um the I pull out amethyst, um, my four gold rings, and be necklace. And then, um, and then the very last thing I pull out, and as I'm thinking about pulling it out, and I say, look, you know, looking around at the design of my other jewels, I think particular interest in this item, and pull out the signature Sylvanas. Um, well, the gold rings, uh, you know, I, I could definitely do something with those. Uh, I'll say uh, four gold pieces each for those. Um, the Amasith, uh, because it's not cut, unfortunately, I'd probably say uh, five silver for that one. Um, the necklace is okay. Um, it would, a lot of work would need to be done, but uh, I could actually probably I could do something with that. I'll, I'll say uh, five gold for that as well. And I'm I'm still holding, and then like I said, I'm holding out. Uh, six. The thing that ring is still You know, and I say, well, what about this one? She, uh, he, he looks at the, uh, the ring. Kind of smells it and, and, like, tries to dig his finger, uh, nail into it. Uh. I mean, it definitely is an interesting piece. Uh, it being silver, not worth as much as gold. Uh, I'll say two gold for this. Okay. Um, I'll sell him everything except. Except what? Except for the amethyst. Okay. So, so 16 gold rings. 21, 23 gold. So. You know what would have been a good gift for Shao? What? A signet ring to the god <laughs> she, worship she worships. Didn't you, didn't you get like a necklace from there? I got a Not necklace it. of Sylvanas, I think, yeah. But... Yeah, like, you already have something from there. So I literally... Wait, do I have a necklace of Sylvanas? Uh, I'm you have sure them. you do. I it's on my item necklace. list. Did we sell Did it we sell to Zonala? I don't know. Can't remember. Cause it's not on my uh, list. We might have sold it to, to Zonala. I need a light. Necklace. Rings. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, after that, the last thing I wanted to do is just see if I could find any work, like, like, full bounty, some money, I need that mula. <laughs> Alright, so what are the rest of you doing while, while, uh... You know, I, I guess, um, since now I just remember the frog part, 
I guess I'll go to a, um, like, uh, what's it called? Like, a like an alchemist Al shop <laughs> or a, um, or, yeah, probably like an alchemist shop, uh, to see if I can try to sell off the, uh, the parts that we have and then go back to the, uh, rusty tankard for the brawl, the four or three. Mm -hmm. Um, which call it? uh, what parts did you end up having for the Prokemoth? <clears throat> Um, all I put down on the character sheet was I have a skin bag of Frog Hemoth, and that's where we had, I, I don't, I don't, I don't exactly have it written down. I just remember we said hands. I have I the think, 20 Frog Hemoth in my inventory, but I know that that's was, food was carrying it, but. Yeah, so the 20 teeth, uh, the hands, the feet, and it was either the heart that we tried, or the brain, I don't remember. I thought we had the tongue also. Might have the tongue yeah, also. Yeah, you, you guys, I remember the tongue. But I couldn't remember what else you guys took. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know, all I have is skin bag of frog hemoth because I remember I cut off a section of the skin to put all the stuff in. Okay. Um I would say a persuasion check for disadvantage due to the condition of it. Cause it's been rotting for a week and you know I mean who who knows if it's been rotting? I mean, technically, it might not. It, it could be special. It could be, like, magical. It, it's a bag of holding. Bag of colding. Oh, is that too? The... The, um... The alchemist just kind of looks at you and just kind of, like... No. No. What this, about the teeth? This... The teeth? The teeth are still good. Uh, teeth are good. I, I'll take those. Uh, please just dispose of the rest of that garbage. <laughs> okay, for 200 gold. Uh, I will take this out of your shop right now if you hand me 200 gold. He just kind of like gets this like deadpan like you've got to be fucking kidding me kind of looks. I grab the top of the bag and the bottom of the skin bag and I start to lean it like like tilt it. I'm like 200 gold. <laughs> and the longer he waits, the, the now, more I start to I have the dealt more I start with to people pour just like you all the time. <sighs> Do you want me to get the guards? Cause I will. No. <laughs> <laughs> My party wouldn't like that. I mean, you can go for it if you want, man. We're not That's there. That's what I thought. I will pay five silver a tooth. So this is twenty-five teeth. So uh, twelve gold, five silver for the teeth. Deal, deal. Very good. When he uh. And grabs a little chest from underneath and he counts up the gold and silver and he puts it in your hand. Now, please take that smelly whatever you want to call it and please leave my shop. I've got customers. 
Okay. I start to walk towards the door. Is there a trash can, like, right next to the door? Like, on the inside? Uh, no. There is not. Darn. Darn. Okay. <laughs> if any knows what he doesn't want any of I, I, I walk out of the store. Is there anybody around? Uh... Not... I mean, make a perception check. Ah, never mind. I'm just gonna find, like, well, the closest, well, like, like well, no. public trash can. Well, well no. Make, make, a, make a perception check <laughs> to see, like, what kind of people you might notice, if you notice anyone. I didn't do it twice. That's okay. Uh, so, you don't see anyone around. Um, you know, there's like, there's like three or four people that are walking away from you, but the backs are turned. And you look the other way, there's no one over there. I'm just gonna like, pour just a little bit of the juice out on one of the steps. And then I'm gonna go find a trash can and just throw it away. Okay. Take that, bitch. And then I'm gonna come back to the party. Alright. Shao, Alivar, Leah, you guys Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, I'm going to the tavern. I'm going to okay. that tavern. But I can wait until after. Um, I wanna um, go to an alchemist to... shop, for sure. You wanna go to what? An alchemist store? Like, a, you know, an apothecary? Oh, she's okay. gonna step in. So, as you are walking up the steps to the same apothecary that you went to, uh, you <clears throat> notice it smells really, really bad, and you step in something wet and kind of gelatinous uh, on your way up the steps. Um, what did I step did I... in? Uh, you look down, it's kind of like a mixture between, like, coagulated blood uh a little bit of like um like decomposed like meat juices and Wait, like was, was door here yeah this is the same same oh, oh, oh shit i didn't know I didn't that you went to an went... alchemist store <laughs> okay wonderful so you walk in the smell wafting in behind you. Um, uh, yes, is, is there anything I can help you? Um, well, oh, oh, yeah. stairs are full, full of, of uh, uh, like, blood, blood and, and stinky and coagulated black. goo. Um, uh, so, you, so you, you might want to clean that up, that up. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I wanted to procure some ingredients. Yeah, you can see like uh, the just the smell that's coming off of feet uh, from the little puddle in in front of of the building. Like it's just it it's reeking like high heaven. Um, do, do you have any like thing to get get the stench out of here? Um, I uh. It... I... Yes. I, I do. Uh, oh god, why did I breathe? <laughs> uh, what can I help you with? Madam? Um, I was um, wondering if you had I... any flowers from the family of Nightshade. Um... Uh, yeah, uh... Uh, nightshades are over there. Uh, uh you can, you're free to go look. Uh, do you have any death uh, at all? Uh, you, you can check. Uh, I have to go to the back right now. Uh, excuse sure, me. Sure, but please, please do get rid of the smell. Um, and he like goes into the back. Still everything. And you just, you, he's just retching in the back. 
Can you like Will I have anything to clean my feet off with? I don't think I do. Um you go to the uh to the side wall. There is death bell and uh and uh uh you know, nightshade available there. There's probably two death bells and uh, five nightshade flowers. For okay, I need to pull up the droughts and ointments thing. Um, you see, uh, he like the guy like comes back with like uh, a rag and like he's got like a sack that he's got like slung like a grocery bag uh, and he's got like a small bottle of like perfume or something like that and he's like dousing the rag in it and like holding it up to his mouth um, and then he like takes this bag uh, off his arm and, and he like starts pouring this white powder all over the, the floor and he like goes out front and like you see like he just like like almost throws up in his mouth and then he just like pours this white powder all over the front step um can i look around oh, for problem. blister wart and blue dragonflies as well uh blister wart uh you find eight uh it's a fairly in like common ingredient okay i'm gonna grab uh, eight of those Okay, so eight blister war. Yeah, let me uh, make okay. a list really quick. Let me pull up a blank okay. sticky note. That way, so yeah. we don't like have to worry <laughs> about remembering <laughs> everything like we usually. Right. Good idea. Good idea. Okay, so eight blister war. How many death bells did you say there was? There were two available. Okay, and how many nightshade? Uh, five. Are you just cleaning them out? Um, I'm only gonna take three of the nightshades because I already have two on me. Okay. And I can also, I can also like, scavenge yeah. those pretty easily, because nightshades are, like, everywhere. Yeah, nightshade's pretty common in Nohaden. Um, uh, did I find I... any blue dragonflies? Uh, you do not find any blue dragonflies. Okay, um... You do find, uh, some, uh, Nordic barnacles. Uh, you also find... Uh, some small antlers, uh, you find some, uh, some wheat, some oh, troll I... fat, thistle. Are there any spider uh, eggs? Are... Spider eggs? Uh, yeah, you find three spider eggs in okay. one of the baskets. I'm gonna take all of those. You said that we found troll fat as well, right? Yes. Okay, I want to take that too, because I know troll fat is rare. Okay. Uh, there's like three jars of it available. Okay, I'm going to take all three. Okay. Um, does he have any yep. vampire dust? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, um... Does he have any swamp fungal pods? Uh, no. Um, salmon row? Uh, he has no salmon row. Okay, any rock warbler rock eggs? Rock warbler eggs? Yeah. Uh, I would say he has two. Okay, I'm gonna take both of those. Okay. Does he have any orange dragonflies? Uh, no. Also no to that. Any Lunamoth wings? 
Uh, you find three. Okay, I'm gonna take all three. Okay. Any imp stool? Uh, probably like two or three. Um, I'll take two. Okay. Does he have any hanging moss? Because I want to make I wanna... a like I I, I want to I want... make a constitution potion for Gundor as well. So hanging moss. Uh, yeah, yeah he's got he's got a lot. Um, so can I bushels. just take like five? Yeah, so five. Because that's also that's pretty all. easy to procure, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty easy. In the forest, great. anyway. Yeah. Um, any um, giant's toes? Um, he does not have any giant's toes. Um, any elves oh. ears? Uh, elves ears. He's got. He's got again fairly easy ingredient. Hayden. Uh, he's got about seven or eight. I'll take three. Okay. And we're not going to worry about doing the math. We'll just say that the transaction takes place for all, of us, and I'll send you the bill. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh I'm trying to look for other for... things that give, like, decrease the protection to cold. That way, so, like, on our trip to the portal, I can, like, use a poison. Um, um we'll, we'll, we'll call that good oh, for that... now. I think this is a good enough okay. list for now. Alright. He's, like, behind the counter, like, with the, with the rag. He's, like, trying to, like, you know, breathe normally. And the smell has faded. <laughs> Uh, it still lingers a little bit, but it's not as pungent as it was before. Um, since you're fairly responsible for this, is there any way that you can clean my feet as well? Or do you have a place that I can do that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're on your own for that. Uh, oh, I'm glad that you stayed this long. <laughs> uh. Well, can well, I get a discount on these come ingredients, ingredients yeah. seeing how, uh, your shop Chop. isn't in the, uh, the, the best of shape, and it kind <laughs> of ruined my shoes, so I'm gonna have to buy new ones. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you, like, three gold discount so you could buy new shoes. Is, is that okay? Yep, that, that's acceptable. <laughs> okay. Okay. The things I do for my party. <laughs> Alright, so the transaction takes place. You have your sack of ingredients. Uh, if you just want to send me that list, I'll total all the cost up and send the place back to you. Uh, yeah. Let me. Do you want me to just post it in Roll20? Or do you want me to send it to you on Facebook? Uh, just send it on Facebook. So, uh, Stefan, you've got work. Mm -hmm. okay. Me as well. <laughs> Alright. So. With the shenanigans of that, uh, we will end our session today. I think, I think we made good progress. Oh, by oh, the way, way um, Alamar, I plan on having you, like, cast that uh, one spell, spell. That so these ingredients can't expire, so... <clears throat> what, uh, you mean... Like, the, 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 the one stasis one? spell you use to prevent decay. Gentle repose. That, that was for a body. Is it only for a body? It's only I mean, for a body. Oh, I, I thought it would be for like all living things. Uh, we can we can take a look. We can take a look. Because I'm not going to like <laughs> be able to use all these ingredients at once. <laughs> Eat that. Corpse or other remains. So maybe. But we'll see. We'll see. <sighs> All right, guys. Hopefully, we can play next weekend. Yep. Hopefully, yep, we can. We will. We will figure that out. See you guys. All right. See you guys. All see right. ya. Bye, guys. All right, guys. End of the session. End of the stream. If you enjoy, go ahead and hit that follow button. If you really enjoy, go ahead and subscribe. Um, we're live usually every week. Um, but we've had some scheduling discrepancies you lately. Um, but anyways, we'll hopefully see you next week.